Hi students, today I am going to tell you about wave motion. Now what exactly are waves? We keep hearing about light waves, radio waves, sound waves. So how is wave motion different from say a ball moving on the ground? There is a key difference. Wave motion is the method of energy transfer from one point to another without bulk transfer of matter. What this means is that in wave motion energy moves from one point to another but matter does not move from one point to another. So if I am making a sound, the sound energy is moving from my mouth to your ear but the air particles you know near my mouth they are not moving you know from my mouth to your ear. Only energy gets transferred, matter doesn't get transferred in wave motion. Here's another example. In this pond, when a pebble is dropped, the energy, you know, that the pebble imparts to the pond, that's what gets transferred from the center of these circles to the periphery, radially. But the water itself does not move from the center to the periphery. It's the energy, you know, that moves because of the vibrating particles of water. You know, the particle here vibrates, the particle here vibrates, the particle here vibrates, the particle here vibrates. But th all these particles are not actually moving from the center of the circle to the periphery. They are just vibrating and the disturbance, the vibration is what is moving. It's moving like this. If you look at this leaf here, it does not move radially. Had the water, you know, moved radially, this leaf would have moved too. But this leaf just bobs up and down because the particles vibrate. They don't move radially. Take a look at this loudspeaker for example. Again, energy is transferred from the loudspeaker to your ear. But the air particles are not transferred. It is the energy that travels in the shape of a wave. There are two types of waves. The first type of waves are electromagnetic or non-mechanical waves. These are waves which do not require a medium to travel. This means that energy can be transferred from one point to another point in this kind of wave motion without there being any vibrating particles in between. You know, sound waves are not electromagnetic waves for example because they require air, you know. But electromagnetic waves can travel through space also because they don't require any medium. Light waves, radio waves, infrared waves are all electromagnetic waves. So you receive you know, heat from the sun which is thousands of kilometers away. Even though there is outer space in between the sun and you, there is no air. But because electromagnetic waves can travel through space, you feel hot. The next type of waves is mechanical waves. In fact, these are the types of waves which are which we are going to focus on in this chapter. Mechanical waves require a medium to travel. So for example, when I make a sound from my mouth, the air particles near my mouth start vibrating. This causes th the next air particle to vibrate. This causes the next air particle to vibrate and so on, you know. So the medium particles vibrate and because of this the sound energy is transferred from my mouth to your ear. The disturbance in case of mechanical waves propagates through periodic motion of medium particles about a mean position. So the medium particles vibrate and this causes the disturbance to be transferred. So here you can see there is an energy source. This energy source causes you know, the particles of the medium to vibrate and this transfers the energy from particle to particle. Mechanical waves are of two types, transverse mechanical waves and longitudinal mechanical waves. The difference between them is simple. In case of transverse mechanical waves, the medium particles vibrate perpendicular to the direction of motion of the energy. So if energy is being transferred you know, from left to right, in case of transverse mechanical waves, the particles move up and down like this. So here you can see one of the particles moving, but actually all the particles you know along this wave are moving up and down up and down in fact if you took a snapshot you know of all these moving particles and saw the picture this is what you would see you would see that 
all the particles are moving up and down and vibrating in such a way that if you join all the particles at any instant the shape you will get will be the shape of a wave isn't that interesting here's another example if you look at this particle at the end of this wave pulse you can see that it vibrates up and down as the wave moves on from left to right we've shown just one particle vibrating in this case you know up and down but a lot of particles vibrate like this up and down and that's what gives you know the imp you the impression that something is actually moving from left to right the disturbance is propagating from left to right have a look at some examples of transverse waves a vibrating string is one example if you pull at one end of a vibrating string you know the disturbance get tra gets transferred to the other end by means of the string particles moving up and down up and down similarly an audience wave you know in mexico what happens is sometimes thousands of spectators stand and sit stand and sit stand and sit they do this again and again they just stand up and then they sit down and they do that you know alternately like one row stands up then another row stands up then another row stands up and then the first row of people sit down now all this causes you know if you look at you know this event from a distance you'll feel that a wave is passing through the audience so this is exactly how a transverse wave works people are just standing up and sitting down they are not moving from one place to another but the energy the disturbance is you know being propagated through the audience so that's also an example of the a transverse wave now we come to the second kind of waves longitudinal waves longitudinal waves are very similar to transverse waves because in this case also particles are vibrating and energy is being propagated but in this case the particles vibrate from left to right left to right if the wave is moving from left to right in longitudinal waves the particles vibrate in the same direction in which energy is being transferred here you can have a look at this animation it better depicts longitudinal wave propagation you can see that the particles of the medium are moving from left to right left to right and the wave pulse is being transferred as the particles move from left to right compressions and rarefactions are being created that is some groups of particles come very close to another you know like here and these compressions and rarefactions are being transferred like this is a compression rarefaction compression rarefaction and you know as this compression and rarefaction keeps oscillating the wave pulse gets transferred this is what happens in case of longitudinal waves in this animation you can compare the movement of particles in case of transverse waves and longitudinal waves here you see that in case of transverse waves particles are moving perpendicular to the direction of wave motion which is from left to right in case of longitudinal waves here you can see that the particles are moving from left to right as the wave moves from left to right simple isn't it so we've talked a lot about longitudinal waves but is there some practical example of longitudinal waves sound waves have a look at this picture if you imagine that this funny face on your screen is me <laughs> then you'll see that the particles near my mouth start vibrating when i speak when that happens as i told you earlier compressions and rarefactions occur and the longitudinal sound wave transfers energy the next topic that we're going to consider is wave front the surface or line joining all medium particles that oscillate in the same phase is called a wave front now what does the term particles that oscillate in same phase mean two medium particles are in the same phase if their displacement from the mean position is same at every instant let's have a look at it by means of this figure you know when you look at a wave you see that the shape of the wave keeps repeating again and again and again 
if you look at this particle right here and this particle right here you'll see that both of these particles will always be at the same distance from their mean position when this particle is at zero when its y coordinate is at zero the y coordinate of this particle is also zero when this particle you know when its y coordinate will increase to the highest point this particle will also be at its highest point why because you know this wave is exactly the same you know the, its shape as this wave so this particle will always have exactly the same displacement from the mean position as this particle when that happens these particles are called you know particles in the same phase and the line joining all these particles in the same phase is called the wave front let's have a look at you know the shape of wave fronts found in general so this was the point that we had seen earlier what do you think will be the shape of the wave front here any guesses think think this will be the shape in fact this blue circle you see here will only be one of the many wave fronts created why will this blue circle be one of the wave fronts because every point on this blue circle is equidistant from the source of the waves the waves are like this like this like this like this like this and the blue circle points are all equidistant from the wave source so all of them will have the same displacement from the mean position at any given time similarly if you if i were to draw another circle slightly bigger than this blue circle say here then all the points in that circle also would form a wave front in fact all these ripples that you're seeing they're all wave fronts because any point on the ripple is equidistant from the wave source so its displacement from the mean position will be the same as all the other points on the ripple now have a look at a point wave source the point wave source will emit waves in all all directions like here 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 and even towards you if you look at the point source closely you'll only realize that a point source is the three dimensional equivalent of a ripple wave source the one that we just saw earlier so as in that case we had circular wave fronts just like that we'll have spherical wave fronts in case of a point wave source you see every point on the sphere will be equidistant from the point wave source and so it will be displaced equally from the mean position wavelength we all have heard of the term wavelength definitely but what is it exactly in scientific terms wavelength is the distance between the two nearest points of the medium oscillating in the same phase remember we've talked about the same phase points we had talked about this point and this point being in the same phase the wavelength is the distance between two points you know which are in the same phase like it's the smallest distance between two points which are in the same phase another way of looking at the wavelength is you see the shape of the wave keeps repeating 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 the length of one such wave shape is the wavelength simple these particles are in the same phase and this is the wavelength lambda